Yo, yo, what's going on, you guys? And welcome back to the A-Ray Show. So today's another episode of the Zero to $100,000 Challenge. And this is a challenge that I started last month, the first month of 2021. And so it's been about a month and we're going pretty strong here. And this whole challenge is basically to get my account from $0 all the way to $100,000. And yeah, that's a little bit clickbait just because I started with more money than $0. But the whole point is we're going to start this account with a very low amount and kind of just grow it as aggressively as possible to grow it as high as possible. And the goal is $100,000. And hopefully we'll be able to reach it by the end of the year. And like I've said before, I'm more of a dividend and more of a conservative investor than I am a growth investor. But this is something that we're going to just do for the channel and something that we can all kind of do on the side and kind of have fun with. And the past two weeks or so have just been insane from everything that's been going on from the GameStop situation to the Robinhood broker situation. And just this morning, Elon Musk announcing that Tesla will now be investing $1.5 billion into Bitcoin, which is just insane. And there's definitely been a wide variety of things that have been going on in the past few weeks since my last update. So I'm just going to kind of go over a few of these things, my thoughts, and I also have some things for new and beginning investors that I think that they should know before getting into investing. So all that will be in this video, as long as, you know, updates here and there in my portfolio. So without further ado, yo, let's get right into this intro. So first things first, let's take a look at how my portfolio performed over the last few weeks and the month. So actually, you guys probably noticed that the market's open, so that's why my numbers are fluctuating. And I actually had to stop recording just to kind of sell one of my swing trades. So that's probably why my buying power is a lot higher than it was in the beginning of the video. But yeah, let's take a look at how my portfolio has been performing. So over the past week, it's up about 10.5%, which is really good. Um, that's pretty good. And let's take a look at the month. So in the past month, my portfolio is up 22.5%, which is huge. And honestly, that all happened recently from basically the past week or so. And what happened was Dogecoin actually exploded. And you guys know from my previous video that I did on Dogecoin that I had a small position of about $25 and I got in at about half a penny. And it, currently it's about at eight cents, which is a huge increase. I remember being up about 1,500%, which is huge. And that $25 turned into almost $400 and I sold all that. So I actually had to take profit just because, you know, this is something that one of my friends says and somebody in my group chat, and that's that nobody ever died or got hurt taking profits. So I kind of just stayed true to that and took some profits. And that's one of the reasons why my portfolio has been doing pretty well over the past few weeks. Another reason is because I've been trying out a new strategy with options and that's called a covered call. And that's something I'm going to go over more in my future videos, how to do a covered call and how you can benefit from it. But I'm just going to quickly go over it so you guys can kind of get a gist of what I'm talking about. So this is a company that I own. Uh, Genius Brands or GNUS and I've been down on this company for quite some time and I kind of figured out a way to leverage that and that's under a covered call and if you guys don't know what a covered call is I got you guys covered oh man that was corny I probably got to cut that out but all jokes aside all it is is if this stock genius goes to five dollars and fifty cents then i have to sell that to the person if they want me to so they have the option or not if they want to buy it from me or not but i have to sell it to them if they say that they want me to sell it to them so i have to have at least 100 shares so that's the bare minimum that you need to be able to do a covered call so you guys are probably asking what's in it for me why would i want to sell my shares at five dollars and fifty cents well i should get this thing called a premium so this person paid me $6 to make this deal with them. And that $6 is mine regardless if I have to sell it or not. And if it doesn't go to $5.50 and this person doesn't want me to sell it to them, then the ex contract expires worthless, which just means that nothing happens and I get to keep all 100 shares. So I know this is a little bit confusing. So if you guys have a question, leave a comment below and I'll try to help you guys out. But honestly, it's something that I'm going to go into with more detail in the future. And I'm going to kind of show you guys why I'm doing these covered calls with Genius Brands. And that's because I'm down big. I'm down almost $1,400, which is huge. And rather than wait or take losses, I decided to start doing covered calls to kind of make up for it and get some money on the side. 
So the way it works is I'm just collecting premiums every single week. I like to think of it as, you know, kind of like an allowance or just like extra five to ten dollars every single week while I wait for my genius brands position to kind of recoup. That way I don't have to like just sit there and have like kind of a dead loss right there. So that's why I'm doing these covered calls just to kind of make some money on the side. I know it's not a ton of money, five to ten dollars every single week, but it's something there and you know, I'll take it. And you guys probably noticed that a lot of my positions are exactly the same. And that's because I haven't really been doing too much with my portfolio. I've just been swing trading. I'm keeping Neo, Palantir, and some of these companies are exactly the same as my last update. And some of the SPACs actually merge. For example, Clover, UWMC are just two of them. But yeah, that's pretty much it. No major changes from my portfolio. Just going to keep on holding and swing trading and kind of growing this portfolio. I did pick up a few pennies here and there. For example, ZOM has been really great. Uh, they have a giant catalyst coming up in March, but other than that, like I said, not too much going on here, but there is a few things that I wanted to talk to and I wanted to talk to the newer investors in general. So to my new and beginning investors, maybe you guys got into investing after you guys heard about GameStop or AMC, but maybe some of you guys made some money and maybe some of you guys lost some money. And that's one of the things that sucks about these hype plays is a lot of you guys will end up losing money and then stop trading or investing in general. And that's one thing that I kind of want to point out is there's a difference between investing and trading. Investing is when you buy and hold a, a strong, healthy stock over a long period of time. So let's give an example of that. Let's say you buy Apple. You're not planning to sell it anytime soon. Apple is a stock that's going to keep on growing and give a dividend at the same time. It's a stock that you want to hold for years and years. But trading, on the other hand, is... If you're going to buy a stock, for example, I do some trading with these penny stocks that I have. For example, ZOM's one, HOVF. So these are just a few examples. So you're going to buy a stock that's very low value and that's very volatile. It could go up or down at any moment. So these type of investments are more of trading because you're looking to sell it right away. So I would say... For you guys that are new investors or new traders, whatever you want to call it, to kind of figure out which one is more up your alley. If you're okay with market fluctuations, then maybe you're a better day trader. But if you want to just buy and hold and have an easy peace of mind, maybe, then maybe you're an investor. A link above, uh, I made a video on dividend growth investing. That's probably the easiest investing strategy just because all you have to do is pick out your stocks that you want to hold and then buy and then that's all you have to do. And I made a whole video on that so I'll definitely leave it somewhere on the top over here. But that's my one piece of advice and I'm not a financial advisor or anything like that but I just figured it'd be best for new and beginning investors to kind of know that before you get into trading. And a lot of times with new investors, they'll typically listen to hype and they'll buy on the hype. So just for example, you hear about GameStop and maybe you buy it $150. Well, now GameStop's probably around $60 to $75 and you lost a lot of money. You listen to people when they say, yo, have diamond hands, don't sell, don't sell. And you end up holding the bag. And that's basically something that's happened to me. And that's why I bring it up. I don't want this to happen to you guys, my fellow investors, you know, my new and beginning investors. This is a lesson that pretty much everyone learns. So if it happened to you, don't feel bad. And I'm not trying to pick on anyone. This, Like I said, this has happened to me. And this happened to me with Genius Brands. So I ended up buying it right around here towards the top. And when it pumped up, it went all the way to $10. It's not going to show it here because it was only for a brief moment, but I felt like I was on top of the world. I basically doubled my huge investment and when it tanked for a bit, people were saying don't hold, uh, sorry, don't sell, don't sell, just hold it. And a lot of times what happens is it just keeps dipping and it went all the way down to $1 and probably even below that. And I felt so bad just because my, so right now I'm down $1,400, which still sucks, right? But I was down way more than that. I was down probably like over 90% of my original investment. And a lot of times what people do is they end up selling at that. And then they basically mark in their losses. And they're not able to recover from that. So is it just a lesson that hopefully you guys will learn and not have to learn the hard way like I did? I just wanted to bring it up because this is something that happens all the time. A lot of times... I don't really want to say people will try to trick you, but a lot of times people will convince you to buy the hype and the hype usually isn't sustainable. So if you guys see profits, take those profits. And I'm just going to keep on mentioning this quote from one of my friends because it's a quote that I really like and that's don't be afraid to take profits. Honestly, nobody ever died or got hurt from taking profits. So if you see a profit, just take it, get that profit and move on. So that's pretty much all the advice I have for you guys, especially you new and beginning investors. 
And like I said, I'm not a financial advisor, but it's definitely something that I've gone through personally and I wouldn't want anyone else to be left holding a bag like I am with Genius. And one last quick thing before we end this video. So if you guys don't like what's going on with Robinhood and you're thinking about switching over your brokerage from Robinhood to another brokerage, think about getting a brokerage that has a lot more financial stability than Robinhood does. Without going into too much detail, basically Robinhood didn't have the enough collateral or money to be able to support these clearing houses. And basically that's one of the reasons why you couldn't really buy into AMC because they were afraid and they had to pay collateral. But I mean, the whole situation has just been a mess. So if you're thinking about switching from Robinhood to a more safe one, I would recommend TD Ameritrade or Charles Schwab or even Fidelity. These ones are really good. Personally, I don't use any single one of those. Um, I'm probably going to stick to Robinhood just because I don't really chase under, you know, AMC and GameStop stocks like that. But I do use Webull and Webull has been a great platform for me. I have a link in the bio if you guys want to check that out, if you guys want to sign up there. Uh, or you guys can just use your friends to get a referral there. You do get three free stocks, I believe it is. So definitely sign up. And I know those sounded really sponsored, but I'm not sponsored at all. Ain't nobody going to sponsor some YouTube channel with only 60 subscribers. But yeah, all jokes aside, uh, I, those are just honest recommendations that I would recommend to you. If you're thinking about switching out of Robinhood, uh, definitely Webull is a really good one to use. But aside from that, I appreciate you guys for listening and I appreciate all six of you guys for subscribing. It means a lot to me. Came a long way from the few subscribers I had just a few months ago. But with that being said, that's pretty much all I have for you guys for my update on my zero to $100,000 challenge. We have a lot of things coming up. I have a lot of good ideas. And you know, Bitcoin has been exploding, so we might have to make a crypto video soon. And with that being said, that's pretty much all I have for you guys. Remember to comment, like, or subscribe if you got any value. Or if you have any questions, you guys can email me, DM me on Instagram, or just leave a comment and I'll be sure to answer and hopefully be able to help in any way. With that being said, guys, peace out. And remember, everybody eats.